in your hematology lecture, we have your hematopoiesis. Hema, hema, referring to your blood, and poesis, meaning to your production. Again, so meaning class hematopoiesis refers to the continued and regulated process of blood. Again, class, take note of the word regulated. We believe in the saying that anything that is of excessive amount is bad. So that is the reason why you have to have a regulated process of blood. Now, there's a disorder known as your leukemia. Leukemia is known as your uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells. Uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells, which usually involves WBCs. So again, what type of cell is usually involved in leukemia? It's your WBC. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Now class, there are two theories related to hematopoiesis. First is your monophyletic, mono meaning one, or unitarian theory. It states here that Take here class that they only believe that there is only one stem cell or your parent cell known as your pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. Class, sabi sa theory na to, meron lang daw isang stem cell. Itong si PHSC, si pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell, siya yung sa kanya nang gagaling lahat ng cell. So, we have your RBC, WBC, and your platelets. Ganyan ang theory niyan. Now, this was advocated by Maximo and Pappenheim. This is the widely accepted theory class when it comes to hematopoiesis. Okay? So again, your monophyletic involves only one parent cell or stem cell known as the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. This was advocated by Maximo and Pappenheim and is the widely accepted theory. Okay. Next, we have the stem cell. Class, on stem cell class, these are the cells that have the ability to divide and differentiate into various kinds of cells. Um, they are also known class as your progenitor cells. Progenitor. So kung mahilig kayo sa mga bampira, yung mga bampirang palabas, you will hear this word progenitor. Now, when you say progenitor class, that refers to the cell or the person where, where, in the, where they come from. Now, there are three types of stem cells. We have first your totipotent stem cell, which is usually seen first few hours after ovum is fertilized. Class, now, Whenever a sperm cell fertilizes an egg cell, within the first few hours, your totipotent stem cells are produced. Plus, your totipotent is the most versatile, meaning jack of all trades, meaning pwede siyang maging kahit ano. Pwede siyang maging brain cell, pwede siyang maging tissue cell, pwede siyang maging heart, heart cell, and so on. It can develop to all, including developmental embryo and placenta. So class, um, this is one of the most important type of stem cell. Then we have your pluripotential. This is usually seen, seen several days after fertilization. Can develop into anything except the embryo and the placenta. And then we have your multipotential found in adults, but limited to specific type of cells. Plus, among the sources of hematopoietic stem cells sa human, yung umbilical, yung peripheral, or yung bone marrow, which do you think is the best among the three? Ano sa tingin niya? Which do you think is the best? Please write it in the public chat or you may speak. Mm -hmm, bone marrow. Umbilical, okay. It's the umbilical. Now, why do you think it's the umbilical? Anong meron kay umbilical class? O, anong meron kay placenta? Anong meron kay umbilical? Why is that the best source of your stem cell? 
Anong meron? Bakit si umbilical cord class? Okay, wala may idea. Alright. So remember class, yung potipotent nyo, sinabi ko, di ba, siya yung pinaka most versatile and is usually seen first few hours after the ovum is fertilized. Remember class, your umbilical cord, these are seen or taken from fetuses. And the most likely stem cell found in your fetuses in the umbilical cord is your totipotent. Thus, making your umbilical cord the best the best source of your stem cell. Okay. And another is your peripheral blood, then your bone marrow. So, kwas sa mga cases ng mga patients na may cancer or may um, damage uh, body part, they usually use stem cell treatment for that. And they usually take it from the cord blood or the umbilical cord blood. Any questions? Yeah. All right. Then we have the second theory class, also known as your polypyletic or dualistic theory. They believe that there is a separate and distinct stem cell compartment for each of the blood cell. So dito sa theory na to class that was suggested by Sabin, meron daw kayong dalawang progenitor cell. Tapos kada isang progenitor cell, ito si RBC. Dito naman si WBC. Yan na. So this is not accepted class. Okay. Alright class, ganito yung itsura nung monophyletic theory niya. So this is your your uh, PHSC. They divide into different cells and so on and so forth. In the Let's go to the next slide. Okay, class, your stages of hematopoiesis. We have first stage, your mesoblastic stage. Class mesoblastic, this occurs from the development of the mesoderm. Usually, class, ito yung sa fetus pa lang. Development of the mes mesoderm until the yolk sac. The chief site is the blood island of yolk sac. So if the question being asked is, what is the main or rather the chief site for your mesoblastic stage? The answer is the blood island of yolk sac. Yolk sac. It starts on the 19th day of gestation. Okay. Events occurring in mesoblastic stage. We have the production of your embryonic hemoglobin. Class, remember your hemoglobin is a type of protein. And proteins are com composed of what? What is the composition of proteins, class? Naalala niyo sa biochem niyo? Anong bumubuo sa ano? We have your amino acids. So under your amino acids class, we have what you call the chains. So for your Gower 1 embryonic, there are three types of embryonic hemoglobin. We have your Gower 1, your Gower 2, and your Portland. Class C Gower 1, meron siyang 2 zeta and 2 epsilon chains. Your Gower 2 has 2 alpha and 2 epsilon chains. While your Portland has 2 zeta and 2 gamma chains, okay? Tandaan nyo lang, class, whenever you talk about Gower, then you always have your epsilon chains. Nag-iba-iba lang siya sa first chain niya, which is 2 zeta and 2 alpha. Then for the Portland, 2 zeta and 2 gamma chains. Then we also have the migration of your aorta gonad mesonephros. So this is a type of cell which give rise to your hematopoietic stem cells, which can only do erythropoiesis activity. So if asked what type of activity does your aorta gonad mesonephros does, only erythropoietic activity. Okay? Any questions for the mesoblastic stage class? And tandaan pag mesoblastic class, this occurs in the fetus starts at the 19th day of age and 
where the production of your embryonic hemoglobins occur. Next, let's go to your hepatic stage. So when you say hepatic class, this involves your liver. It occurs at the second month of pregnancy and declines until the sixth month. Declines until the sixth month of pregnancy. Starting on the third month class, your fetal liver becomes the main site of your hematopoiesis. Again, class, from the 19th day of gestation, what is the main site of hematopoiesis? What is your main site of hematopoiesis since from the 19th day of gestation? It's your blood island of yolks. Very good. Now, in your hepatic stage class, the appearance of recognizable clusters of erythroblasts, granulocytes, and monocytes can be found in the fetal liver, thymus, spleen, placenta, and the bone marrow. Lymphoid cells also begin to appear. So, class, dito na nagsisimula yung production yun ng mga granulocytic and a granulocytic cells. Na. Megakaryocytes are also begin to produce. So, I'll discuss megakaryocytes in the future slides. Then, your thymus develops your T cells. Class, what produces your B cells? Sana po produce si B cells? Anong ano? Bone marrow. Okay. Then your spleen and kidney also produces your B cells. Then we also have your fetal hemoglobin. So after your embryonic hemoglobin class, we have your fetal hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin starts has two alpha and two gamma chains. So pag tinanong kayo class, where does your embryonic hemoglobin form? What stage? Anong stage siya nagpo-form? Ito na class. Anong stage? Mesoplastic stage, okay? Kapag tinanong naman where the serpital hemoglobin stage of course it's in the hepatic stage. Alright, let's go to the last stage or your medullary or your myeloid stage. Medullary class because it happens in the bones. So dito na pumapasok class C, si bone marrow. Si bone marrow nyo class. So again, tandaan yung pagkakasunod niya. Blood island of the yolk sac, followed by the liver, then the last site, habang tumatanda yung fetus, nagiging newborn, hanggang maging adult, si bone marrow na. So pag tinanong class kayo, what is the, ano, what is the stage of hematopoiesis in the, 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 the main stage when it comes to embryos? Si, ano nyo, mesoblastic nyo. Kapag fetuses naman si liver, kapag adult si bone. Okay? So your medullary or myeloid stage of course at the fifth month of pregnancy until birth onwards. The chief site is the bone marrow. Events occurring in the medullary stage, we have your mesenchymal, which differentiates into structural elements. Your mesenchymal cells, these are your adult stem cells class. So here are the events occurring in the medullary stage. You have a myeloid class. When you ever encounter the word myeloid, it is related to WBCs. While for erythroid, this refers to your RBC. So when you hear myeloid erythroid ratio, it is the ratio of your WBC to your RBC. So your ME ratio is 3 is to 1. Mas marami yung WBC nyo class compared sa RBC in the medullary stage. Then your after 9 months of gestation, fetal hemoglobin and hemoglobin A, also known as your adult, adult 
hemoglobin can be detected. There are two types of adult hemoglobin class. We have your A1, which has two alpha and two beta chains. Your A2, which contains your two alpha and your two delta chains. Okay? So with that, if you have no questions for the hematopoiesis, any questions, concerns, none? All right. Let's proceed. How are cells released from the bone marrow into circulation? So class first for RBC. Class hypoxia. Does anyone know the meaning of the word hypoxia? Hypo meaning low. So what, what do you think is the word? What does it mean, hypoxia class? Low oxygen, all right. Low levels of oxygen in the body. You will have hypoxia. And class, you also have your erythropoietin. Erythropoietin class, this refers to the hormone. Hormone that regulates the rate of production of your RBC. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> then we have your WBC. When chemotoxins, class, chemotoxins, this refers to the substances produced by bacteria, injured tissues, and other antigenic factors like your viruses and your fungi. This will be released into the blood, stimulating your WBCs. So class, when asked, um, what is the stimulating stimulating what will cause the stimulation of a WBC it's your chemotoxins plus what they call the movement of, of your W of your neutrophils in and outside of a tissue Anong tawag dun? what they call the movement of your neutrophils all right very good it's your diapodesis all right next let's go to your platelets platelets are produced and released by the shedding or disintegration of your mega karyocyte cytoplasm. So, class, yung mega karyocyte class, isang malaking cell yan. Puro cytoplasm siya. Now, there's a stage sa platelets na kung saan magbibiyak-biyak siya. Producing your platelets. Okay. Principles of normal cell maturation. So, what are the signs? Signs para masabi mo na if a cell is mature or immature. So, ito tatandaan nyo, class. First is your cytoplasmic differentiation. Remember, class, sa cell nyo, sa cell nyo, you have your cytoplasm, you have your nucleus, and in some cases, you have your nucleolus. So, let's analyze them. First is your cytoplasmic differentiation. First is the loss of basophilia or loss of RNA fragments. So, class, usually, ang cytoplasm nyo, ganyan ang itsura nyo. No? Ngayon, pag nawala itong mga RNA fragments na to, na wala itong mga RA fragments na ito, they could mean more mature. Okay? More mature. Then, we have your cytoplasmic granules. So, pag more granules, the cell becomes more mature. So, kapag may mga granules siya, they become more mature. Then, elaboration of phenoglobin. Plus, no hemoglobin means the younger the cell. No hemoglobin, the younger the cell. Okay? Next, we have your nuclear maturation. Structure and cytochemistry. Plus, if the nucleus is round or oval, it means younger. If there is a large nucleocytoplasm ratio, class, when you say the nucleocytoplasm ratio, this refers to the size of your nucleus to the cytoplasm. So kapag mas malaki si nucleus, bawa ito yung cell mo, tapos si nucleus mo class ganito, ganyang kalaki, to the point ito lang yung cytoplasm nyo, it means that the cell is young. Okay? So again, if you have a large nucleus to cytoplasm ratio, you have a younger cell. Then, Nuclear chromatin-rich DNA. So, sa nucleus nyo class, may mga chromatin dyan. Kapag marami yan, it is definitely mas younger yung cell nyo. 
Then chromatin strands are coarse and clump. You have your mature cells. So, ganyan siya. Kapag marami yan, mas mature yung cell. Then, kapag yung nucleoli mo is decrease, decrease or absent, decrease or absent, you have a mature cell. Then, you also have to consider the redu reduction in the cell size. The smaller the cell, the more mature it is. Okay? So, how do you find hematopoiesis? Ano, the, the topic hematopoiesis. Alam niyo, class, when I was taking this subject data in college ako, sa lahat ng part ng HEMA1, ito yung pinakaayaw ko. Siya yung pinaka-boring at siya yung may pinaka-marami kang i-memorize. But sadly, this part, itong part na to, specifically this, tinatanong ito sa board exam. May tanong sa amin doon, if I recall, um, uh, the cell is usually younger if they have this type of nucleus. Tapos may mga choices doon na ano. Hindi ko na maalala yung specific choices, but it, it's being asked yung mga ganito. Alright, next we have to consider the bone marrow class in your erythropoiesis. So again, kapag embryo ka, you have your blood island. Kapag fetus ka, we have your fetal liver. And then kapag adults ka, the main site will become your bone marrow. Okay, your bone marrow class is found in the cavities of your cortical bone. You, have, you can find it in the sternum, the ribs, the vertebrae, the skull, and the pelvis. Sino mahilig kumain ng bulalo? Christian na yan, hindi mahilig sa bulalo. Hindi ka mahilig sa bulalo. Bawa. Okay, class. Si bulalo class, if ma-notice niya ganyan yan, meron siyang taba dito. So that is your marrow. Alright. Now, there are two major compartments sa iyong bone marrow. We have your red bone marrow, which is the hematopoetically active class. So meaning, this red bone marrow, this is the part of the bone marrow that continuously produces your cells. It is composed of 40 to 60 percent ng entire bone marrow. Then we also have your yellow bone marrow which is composed of your adepocytes. Class, what are adepocytes? Ano sila? From the word adepo. Ano sila? So, we have your fat cells. These are your fat cells, class. Which is from the term yellow, kasi ang kulay nila is fat. fat or, the color of fats is yellow. With adepocytes, it has undifferentiated mesenchymal cells and macrophages. It is usually 10 to 50 percent. Plus, during infancy, kapag ano pa si, ano, si baby na infant pa or fetus, um, all bones, yung mga newborn, all bones are usually composed lang ng red bone marrow. Pero kapag dating nila ng age 5 to 7, 5 to 7, yung adepocytes, nire-replace na nila yung red bone marrow. Again, plus, during infancy, kapag infants pa lang, mga newborn, all your bone marrow are red marrows. Pero pagdating niya ng ages 5 to 7, doon na siya nagiging yellow bone marrow. Okay? For bone marrow specimen collection class, for adults, the main or the ideal site would be your iliac crest. While for children, while for children, the main collection site would be your tibia. Okay? Any questions? Let's proceed next to the spleen. Class is spleen. This is the scavenger site for senescent. When you say senescent, old. Mamamatay na. Dying. Dying, old, dying. Class, it is also known as the graveyard site of the body of the body. So dito yung mga tapunan class na mga mamamatay, mga old cells sa spleen nyo yan. Now, how does spleen remove yung mga namamatay? They usually perform two actions, splenic culling and splenic pitting. Si culling class, cells are phagotized, phagocytized by macrophage class. What do you call the macrophage found in your spleen? Spleen. 
Tapos ano tawag niyo doon? Alright, very good. It's your littoral cells. Then we have your splenic pitting. For in your littoral cells to remove yung mga cells in, cell inclusions. Cell inclusions to the cytoplasm. Kinakain niya. Parang yung pinipitas-pitas yan. Then, a reminder class, 30% of platelets are stored in your spleen. Okay? Let's proceed to the next. We have also your myeloid or your erythroid ratio. So, ito ulit tayo class. ME ratio, again, is the WBC to RBC ratio sa body natin. It compares the granulocytic precursors to your erythroid precursors in the bone marrow. So class, the normal ME ratio is 2 is to 1 to 4 is to 1. Na-notice nyo class, laging madami yung mga myeloid, no? yung mga WBC na precursors. Then kapag may infection, it rises. It becomes 6 is to 1. Then again, sabi ko nga, pag leukemia, there is abnormal development of cells specifically related to the WBC. It becomes 25 is to 1. We have your increased ME ratio, which is seen in your myeloid hyperplasia, as well as your erythroid hyperplasia. Decrease naman ang ME ratio nyo sa myeloid hypoplasia and your erythroid hypoplasia. Alright class, before we proceed to the erythrocyte life stages, pahinga muna tayo. So how do you find the topic? Kumusta ang ano? How do you find the matapoesis? Miss Lau, what, what, what are your ano? What are your, anong nararamdaman mo sa lesson na to? Masaya ka ba? <laughs> are you happy? Ikaw Christian, masaya ka ba sa topic natin? <laughs> Loading pa. <laughs> Loading, loading. Yeah, it's okay. Loading talaga yun. Nakaka-ano eh. Nakaka-stress. Ano, nakaka Nakaka-ano kasi yun. Dahil ang dami niyang i-memorize. But nonetheless, kaya niya yan. Multiple choices naman ang quiz niya. Medyo dadalihan ko next quiz kasi ang dami nito. Mamaya naman i-memorize siya lahat. Dahil natatakot kayo lahat. Statements. Tapos dahil syempre yung pag-statement, kailangan nyo alam. Di, alam nyo, di ba? Yung ano. Kung totoo o mali. Nag-quiz na kayo sa ibang subject nyo kanina? Hmm, sige, ipapost ko yung recording. Wala pa kayong quiz kanina sa ibang subjects. Grabe, ako lang pala nagpa-quiz. <laughs> Excited. Then, by the way pala, class, uh, nag-usap pala kami ni Dean. Required pala magbigay ng homework sa lecture. So, I will be giving homework soon. Hindi ko nang alam ano. Anong subject yung quiz niya, Ms. Johnson? Oh, okay. Kaya niya yan. Lecture, lecture. Kaya niya yan, class. <laughs> Tungkol dun sa mga ano, sa pixes. Sa mga ano, mga words na ano. Okay. Okay, let's continue. We have 13 minutes. Okay, class, let's go to your erythrocyte life stages. Class, the first erythrocyte life stages na may encounter nyo would be your rubriblas, also known as your pronormoblas. This is the earliest erythrocyte. It has a nucleus to cytoplasm ratio of 8 is to 1. Again, class, naalala niyo yung rule. Kapag mas madami si nucleus kaysa cytoplasm, mas younger siya. Nucleus usually occupies 80% of the cell. 80% of the cell occupy niya. Kita niyo yung cytoplasm, sobrang liit yun. It is highly basophilic. Kaya niya naman, ang dami niyang RNA content. Iron uptake, globin, and protoporphyrin synthesis occurs here. Okay. Let's go to the next life stage. 
you have your pro rubricite, also known as your basophilic normoblast. It has a NC ratio of 6 is to 1. Kita nyo kung paliit man ang paliit yun sa inyong nucleus. Nucleoli may be absent. Cytoplasm is more basophilic. And it has your hemoglobin production. So from 8 is to 1, naging 6 is to 1 siya. Ano kayang next na ano niya? Okay, let's go to the next slide. We have your rubricite, also known as your polychromatophilic normoblast. Again, your NC ratio becomes 4 is to 1. So, from 8 is to 1, 6 is to 1, naging 4 is to 1 na siya class. Wala na siyang nucleoli. Appears blue, gray, violet due to polychromasia. Plus, when you hear the word polychromasia, this is a changes or mixing changes or mixing of you. When you say the word you, this refers to the color. So yung blue, gray, violet nagmimix yan, appearing as murky gray blue. Then can be confused with a lymphocyte. So again, the cell, so pag tinanong kayo sa quiz, the cell that can be confused with a lymphocyte is your Hemoglobin is now visible. Plus, this is the last stage of cell division. Okay, let's go to the next slide. We have your metarubricide or autochromatic normoblast. NC ratio is 1 is to 2. So, mas madami na yung cytoplasm ni plus. Pamature na siya ng mga pamature. This is the last nucleated erythrocyte stage. Cytoplasm is polychromatophilic and more pink than rubrisa. Appears like orange. So ito class, polychromatophilic siya, more pink siya. Usually orange, red like yung color. Then how will jolly bodies may appear? So I'll discuss this in a picture lesson can be seen in the peripheral circulation in times of extreme anemia. So kapag class, sobrang low blood ng patient, merong hypoxia, low ang hemoglobin sa body, you can finally see your meta rubricide. Okay, let's go to your reticulocyte class. So sa reticulocyte na class, it's all cytoplasm. Wala na si nucleus. It has a size of 8 to 10 micrometer. Cytoplasm has small amounts of RNA. Class, it is usually retained sa bone marrow. Again, and then yung class, the main site of hematopoiesis sa adult is the bone marrow. Si reticulocyte yung class, nag-stay siya sa bone marrow ng 2 to 3 days. Pag pupunta na siya sa circulation, 1 day lang siya sa circulation. Alright, let's proceed na to the next. We have your mature erythrocyte or your RBC na to class. Ito si RBC. 7.2 micrometer in diameter. By concave disc, hence can also be called discosite. So again, the cell that can be called a discosite is your RBC. Now, kapag in-stain mo siya ng right stain, Yung central pale, pale area, nagpipage siya. Then yung side nagiging reddish pink cytoplasm. And ito itsura niya class. Oh. Tingnan niya. Nagfade yung, nag yung gitna and yung cytoplasm sa kilid nagiging kulay pinkish. Lifespan ng RBC niyo class is 120 days. 120 Plus, your RBC production is stimulated by the hormone si erythropoietin. So, si erythropoietin class, this is produced by the kidney, produced by the kidney, and is encoded by your chromosome 7. Chromosome 7. 
It is regulated by the Janus Activated Pyronase Kinase 2, also known as your JAK2, which is then maintained by prostaglandin and renin. Plus sa AUBF nyo, have you discussed renin? Na-discuss ba sa inyo si renin plus sa AUBF? Na-discuss? Wala pa. This is one of the most important topic din na madidiscuss sa inyo relates kid. Now, we have your actions of your EPO. It reduces the time of maturation in the bone marrow. It prevents apoptosis. Class, when you say apoptosis, this is your program cell death. So remember, class, yung mga cells nyo may mga lifespan yan. Now, once, once they reach that lifespan, they will automatically die. You have your program cell death, also known as your apoptosis. EPO allows the early release of your reticulocytes from the bone marrow. Then we have your two types of release. So you have your regular shift reticulocyte, which is the early release in the bone marrow. Then when you have an infection, we have your stress reticulocytes, which is released during pathologic conditions. Okay? Any questions or discuss? Right, let's put this to next. So, class, ito yung mga itsura nila. You have your pro-normoblast. Laki na nga, no? 8 is to 1. 6 is to 1. 4 is to 1. Then, you have your basophilic normoblast. Your polychromatophilic normoblast. Your orthochromatic your reticulocyte, and lastly is your erythrocyte. Plus, ang madalas nyo lang na possible, pwede nyo makita sa smear, sa peripheral blood sa smear, itong tatlo. Ito, para makita nyo to, you have to perform a bone marrow collection. Okay. Hormones affecting erythropoiesis. You have two, your estrogen and your testosterone. Estrogen inhibits erythropoiesis. That is why class dose taking estrogen are parang namumutla. Namumutla sila. At yung mga nagte-testosterone naman, class, akala mo parang kamatis. Yung mga nagbubuhat sa gym. So that's the reason. Estrogen inhibits erythropoiesis. Testosterone promotes erythropoiesis. Okay. 